Hello, I'm Jonathan Baldwin and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the first module of Leading Change. All about me taking stock. Well, I should say the module is not actually about me because that would be a very dull module. It's all about you, how you became the person you are, what your core beliefs are. It starts the journey and it connects to all the subsequent modules. Now the taught bits of the module won't take you long to get through at all, which might surprise you. But that's because most of your time is going to be spent thinking and talking to others and then thinking some more. Now you're doing this course because you're leading a project. And at the moment, only you know what that project is. Your fellow Queen's Young Leaders probably don't know anything about it and the course tutors, well we don't know very much about it either. Chances are that most people you meet every day are completely oblivious of what it is that you're doing. But you're probably thinking about it all the time. You know it inside out and back to front. But you need to be able to tell other people about it so that they can support you, follow you, tell other people about it. And that's partly why you're here, to tell your story, to figure out how to tell your story in a compelling way. So let's start with a question. What do you think is the most important thing that you need to communicate to other people about your project? I want you to pause the video now and have a think about that question. So here it is again. What do you think is the most important thing you need to get across to other people about your project? Pause the video now. Now when we tell other people about our ideas, we tend to focus on two things. We tell people what we're doing and then we tell people how we're going to do it. But is that the right emphasis? I'm going to ask you to watch another video in a second in which the author Simon Sinek explains why certain people inspire others to follow them. So when you watch the video, I want you to see if you can answer the following questions. What's the order of what, why and how that Simon Sinek says most people and companies tell their story? What, why and how? And what does he say is the correct order? Now he uses a few examples to illustrate his point. He talks about TiVo, which is a company you may have heard of, you may not have heard of. He talks about Apple, almost certainly a company you have heard of. And then he talks about the Wright brothers, who were the first people to, uh, to fly uh, an aeroplane. And Martin Luther King, who I'm sure you all know about. Can you think of any other examples of compelling brands or organisations or individuals? They don't even have to be famous individuals. could be people in your own life, in your own community. People that you could use to make the same point. So pause this video and go and watch the other video now. It's embedded in the online classroom, but if you're not there, you can also use the link on the screen. So hopefully you enjoyed watching that video. It's, it's quite thought provoking. I've used it in lots of different situations to get, to get people to rethink completely what it is that they're doing. Now what he says is that when it comes to communicating a message, most people, whether those are politicians, um, ordinary people, business leaders, uh, companies even, they start by saying what they do. 
you know, we make computers is what uh, a computer company does. Or even how they do it. This is how we make the computers. Aren't you impressed? Um, but actually those tend not to be particularly inspiring messages, certainly not for uh, everyday audiences. Instead, he says, we should be very clear about why we're doing something. And usually that why starts with a core belief. I believe that, dot, dot, dot. So, another question for you. Thinking about your project, what is your personal belief at the heart of it? Why are you doing it? I want you to take some time now to have a think about that. What is the why behind your project? I'd say write some notes, but I'd also suggest that you speak to friends and family because they may be able to reflect back on you some, some of the things that you've said to them in the past about why you're doing the project. They can be good, uh, good people to, uh, to mirror you, to tell you what it is that actually you, you believe. So speak to friends and family and maybe also discuss it with other people doing this course. Now, if you're all on Facebook or in the forums on the um, online classroom, it could get very noisy because you're all going to be asking the same question, responding several times over. So I would suggest splitting off into small groups. Let's get together sort of four or five of you at a time uh, to share what you're coming up with, your, your whys, why you're doing your project. We're going to be coming back to all this all the way through the course, so don't rush it. I'd suggest spending a good hour or two really thinking about it and then trying to sum it all up in a short sentence or paragraph. I think you might find it more difficult than you imagine. I'd also suggest um, looking up a copy of Start With Why. This isn't a set text. You don't have to read it as part of this course. But it's certainly one I'd recommend. It's quite entertaining. It's not a difficult book to read. Um, and it probably will make you think very differently about the way you communicate what it is that you do, or rather why it is that you do it to other people. Now another way of thinking about how we communicate is to think about stories. In effect, when you tell somebody else about your plans, you're telling them a story, and all good stories focus on character. To be pulled into a story, we need to be interested in the hero, the friends, the people or events they're battling and the struggles they overcome to succeed. The best stories also involve some kind of change that takes place in the hero. And while you not, may not think about yourselves as, as a hero, and you may think that your project is about other people, as far as other people are concerned, you are important. You're the centre of this project. You're the person in whom they're investing uh, time and trust. So for this first week, I want you to start drafting a mission statement. Now that's a posh way, I suppose, of saying this is what I'm doing. Except that, of course, I want you to put the focus on why you're doing it. So take some time to consider the following questions and write your answers down and keep them somewhere safe. In fact, I'd suggest sticking them on the wall in front of wherever it is you work, on a desk, for example, so that they're always there and you can always remember them and maybe change them as time goes on. So I want you to explain your idea in terms of why. Why is it important? Simplify it as much as possible. Don't overcomplicate it at this stage. And then add the what and the how. And that's it for now. You'll have a draft mission statement for your project. Keep it safe, 
and as I say, you'll be using it soon, and I suspect you'll be rewriting it as the course progresses. And that's it for the first part of this module. It wasn't hard, was it? As I said, most of the time on this module is going to be spent with you thinking and talking and then thinking some more. Now in the next part of the module, you're going to be taking some photographs or having other people take photographs for you. And you'll be telling us all a lot more about yourselves. But for now, just stay focused on distilling your project into a succinct statement. And I'll be seeing you online to talk about Start With Why and your project. So feel free to send me some questions.